I was minding my business in SS2, thereabout. I finished secondary school in Nesto College, Oyo. And um, I had a prayer life. I operated the gift of healing like better than now. Now I'm quite cerebral. At that time, I just knew lay hands on the sick. And you might be sick for five days. In a space of five minutes, you were good enough to play football. That was me. By mercy, I operated very high level intelligence. I, I'm not sure if there were 10 people who were better than me in school. And that's a very large number. And I was into sports. I was into music. I was preaching. I was teaching even as a student. But one of those nights in my prayer time, the Lord said to me, I want to show you the future. In SS2. And I said, it's fine. Because I felt I was going to be a medical doctor. Like my son is also saying doctor now. Well, God will show two of us mercy. You know, you know, I wanted to be a medical doctor. I had chosen an area of specialization. That I was going to specialize in, in, um, in genetics. I wanted, to be, I wanted to master an aspect of surgery. Where we can re-engineer genes. My focus was people with AS, with SC with SS, and then re, re, restructure their genes so that they can live a normal life. That was my body. Something that God, in these few years, has still allowed me to do in a little way, but not by that kind of engineering. The, the, the words have rearranged things for people. So, I asked the Lord, how? What will I do so that I can tell me the future? Because I was raised to know that God has ways, not just acts. And then he pointed at the fish pond area in our school. Very strange place to be in the night. He said, meet me there 12 to 3 a.m. every night. And after a while, I will show you. I was not the average student that went home for break because we had to go for national competitions. I represented the Ohio State on many grounds. So we had to remain in school and keep learning. And so that my prayer was in, was nine months and five or six days. Can't remember well now. Coming there every night to pray. And like I've shared, the only time I got to know that God was still involved in that prayer was the night the prayer point was about witchcraft. And Nep at that time decided to take off the light. And I felt that was the witches that were after me. And one of the most notorious young men on our campus that time brought me a rechargeable lamp and dropped it and walked away. When I met him in the morning, I said, why did you come? He said, God said to me that you are afraid and I should drop the lamp so that you can keep praying. So that was my proof that after five months, God was in the prayer. There's no other communication. But after nine months, yes, in about five days, as I was walking back a few minutes past 3 a.m., I was now in SS3, the Lord said to me, don't come tomorrow. That was about June 8th, the year 2000. I was 17 years going to 18. And I felt it was Satan. I had stopped praying about the future. Anything that came to my heart became a prayer point. I had just loved three hours prayer as a secondary school student every night. The protocol was to sleep at 11, wake up at a few minutes to 12, and then go to pray and come back and sleep. Even during our final exams, I was still running the protocol. But that night I slept at 11 and I woke up at about 5 a.m. And I had a dream and I was caught up into heaven. And I was brought into a vision of seven earth days. And each of those days, I was taught a particular aspect of the church. From doctrine, how to discern enemy activity, how to bring a balance to worship, to prayer. Little, little things that entered my heart as measuring systems. And on the final day, which was a Sunday, I'm rounding up now. I had the vision of a Sunday service, very large church, but empty church. And so I queried the Lord. Why did he come to church? And he said, that's how I look. That's what I see on Sundays. Filled up churches or empty churches. 
For the Father seeketh such as will worship him in spirit and in truth. It means the lenses with which God views service is a true worshiper. All of a sudden, I saw a being, human looking, coming with two ladies with him and about 30 small children. The reason why I reacted to dances last year was because the dances I saw in that vision in 2020 have now arrived in 2000. That's year 2000. Have now arrived in church. And so my reaction was because I never knew that that day would come. And I saw what those things did because they enshrined another civilization in the church. I was given a small bowl, like a bowl of ice of um, sugar cubes. Very white and glistening. And I was throwing them at the children and the children were falling down, dying, falling down, dying. Three on the two women. As I was to throw the last one on that being who I identif identified as Satan, the Lord said to me, my church will rest where there is no contention. Hold back. So I held back that grain. And I saw Satan in that dream wake up those two women and wake up all those two, all those children. And they began to rejoice. And then he looked at me. He said, go back and teach my church the patterns of true worship. Raise me. And then time am. It was from that dream in 20, in 2000, that I knew that what he wanted me to build was a center of his worship. That's where the name came from. And so when you see us labor brutally in prayer, because when I began to seek him afterward, he gave me three tools for ministry. He said, pray with intensity. Teach with deep revelation. And worship sincerely. 